Hello, welcome and good evening. And tonight we want to get the third part of the Let's Code MS-DOS session running. And we want to do some graphics today. Graphics is quite a complicated topic, but again we'll take baby steps and I'll show you how to initialize the VGA card in MS-DOS to, yeah, so that you are able to draw something on the screen. There will be a second part, most definitely, with uh, other stuff like animating things. Um, but for now, this should be, I think, good. I will have to explain a bit more about memory layout under DOS, and it might be hard to understand, and if there are any open questions, please post them in the comments, because I can elaborate much more. But I guess this will already be one of the longer episodes, um, so I don't want to put too much in here. So. Basically what we'll start with is, um, right now what you can see here is standard text mode application, Turbo C runs in text mode, and we can't draw any graphics, like the border here around the window, text window is actually made up of characters as well, so yeah, you can't do a proper game with 256 VGA colors here. So what we need to do is we need to code a function that sets the video mode and um, we have a bunch of different video modes that we can choose from and they will be at most one byte long so yeah um, we haven't defined the byte yet this is not a type that C knows from itself at least not this old version anyway so we say an unsigned character is basically just a byte. So no signed bit was anything, and that's it. Furthermore, um, when we want to set the video mode, we have to call the API of the PC. And the API consists of so-called interrupts. They are BIOS interrupts, um, for those of you that have maybe watched the Halt and Catch Fire series. That's where all the magic happens in the BIOS, right? So in the TV series, they um, reverse engineer IBM's BIOS and then implement it newly, freshly for their own PC because the BIOS is basically the closed source API of the PC and that's what makes it tick and how you access the hardware. And I will link to this page here, um, stannislabs.org. He has a very good comprehensive list of all the BIOS and DOS interrupt functions. And there's one in particular that we want to know, and you can either click here on BIOS Video Services or in 10, it leads to the same page. So interrupt 10, and this is hexadecimal 10, is actually what we need. Um, let's crank this up a bit. Every BIOS service has a number, so 10 is the video BIOS service, and then it has a um, function. Function 0 is set video mode. Well, that's what we already need. But there are also other things like set color palette or uh, read or write characters at cursor point and stuff like that. Lots of things. We'll skip that. However, um, we need this function here. And when you click on that, it says here AH equals 00, AL equals 00, or whatever mode we want. Um, so, what do these things here mean? Actually, so how to pass parameters to the interrupt works in the following way. Every PC has a CPU and this um, CPU has registers. So the CPU in the PC, uh, which originally was the 8086 or rather the cheaper 8088 version, has registers. The registers are used for um, either general purposes, like computing sums or divisions or whatever, and also point to memory and other stuff. So you have these four general purpose 16-bit registers, AX, BX, CX and DX, which take up to 16 bits, and then some um, memory pointing registers for code, data and extra and stack, and some special purpose registers. I won't go into to detail with all of this, apart from the fact that the um, general purpose registers are divided into high and low bytes, 
So the high byte of the AX register is called AH and the low byte AL. So basically what we need to do here is write a 0 into the high byte, which is simple enough, and then a 13 hexadecimal into the low byte to initialize the 256 color mode of the VGA. And how do we do that? We need to have access to the registers. We can either code in assembler, but we will not touch that yet, maybe later. But fair enough, um, TurboC gives us a so-called union, which is similar to a struct if you ever seen it, um, called regs. And yeah, well, uh, you can actually manipulate the registers there. You can write registers and then the high register AH equals something, and this something is the set mode function, and the low byte will be the, what do we call it, the, the mode actually that we get passed here, right? And then we can call the interrupt. There's a function for that, it's called int86, and it takes the number of the interrupt that you want to call, and this will be the video interrupt, and we have to pass it a uh, union with the input parameters, and it will store the results that were passed back from the interrupt in the output. So this time we take both, and we need to take the address of this because it wants a pointer to the structure. And we have to actually tell the compiler what the different things here are. Um, we define set mode to be zero. Actually, we can write 0x0. Zero zero. So we have the um, hexadecimal thing here. And we will say the video interrupt is actually interrupt hex 10. And also, this has to be included from somewhere. So if you look into the um, help file, there will be dos.h, and dos.h comes with the int86 function. That's where it's defined, and that's where the union rex is defined. And it's basically just a union of um, the 16 byte registers and of the half registers, or byte registers, right? And here you have all the registers that we've seen before, or maybe not all of them, the segment registers are missing. But for that, there's another function. So this will allow you to actually set the video mode. We need to put in the include here and we can try to compile it. Success, that's good. Seems fine. And we should be able to actually um, call this function, but first of all we will define what this should be called. Let's call it VJ256 color mode and there was the hexadecimal 13 and the text mode that we usually have text mode, let's take a look here so the default for EGA is um, and VGA is the 80 columns 16 color text okay um, this here would be grayscale, and this here are, is for CGA monitors. You don't want that, that's ugly. But what we are working here with is actually mode 3. So, um, yeah, let's try that. That should work. Let's put it in here somewhere. We can still use the clear screen, that doesn't matter. Set mode VGA256 color mode. And then when we quit, we will be so nice and set the text mode. Let's see if it builds. It does. Let's run it. Oh, look at this. Hello world. In nice grainy output works. And it will even scroll. Not in text mode anymore. And it switches back to uh, text mode when we exit. So that was nice. Okay, um, so basically we can already 
do something. Next thing we are trying is to, well, draw something, I would say. We will make a background for our game. So let's do a function draw background. Right. The question is, how do we actually draw? Well, we'll concern ourselves with that in a minute. I first want to just draw some horizontal lines. Um, very simple, the whole screen. So we will iterate over all the horizontal lines. So the y-axis, because the y-axis is like this here, and the x-axis is horizontal. So first go every line. Um, so y equals zero and y is less than the screen height and we have to define that in a minute. Uh, I always write plus plus y. This is from, from old C plus plus times. Um, probably not necessary. You can write y plus plus in this instance as well. x equals zero. x is less than screen width and plus plus x. And then we need to somehow set the pixel at coordinate x and y with some color and I'm gonna just take y here so we have a different color on every line, right? Because we have up to 256 colors and we have 200 vertical lines, that should be fine. So now we need to define all these things. Um, the easy things are the screen height would be 200, very simple and the screen width is 320, because that's what it says here, right? You have 320 by 200. But how does the setPix function work? Well, for that we need to take a look. Um, we'll take x, y and some color. And then we need to do something, something here. And I'm gonna do a macro here, because um, Turbosy doesn't know about inlining functions, and if I would put it in a function, it would be very slow. And with a macro, it will be basically inline. In the basically, we need to speak where you can use maybe a bit of RAM, maybe there's BIOS there. And then there's a whole bunch for reserved for the BIOS itself, and DOS maybe in this green area. But it's not that simple in MS DOS because the AT86 uses a segmented addressing scheme, which means um, since you use only 16 bits to address everything, in theory you could only not address 1 megabyte but only 64 kilobytes. Which is why on a 16 bit machine they add another 16 bit value here. This one here. And um, basically you take the first 16 bits, multiply them by 16 and then add this offset, so this is called the segment and you add the offset and then you get the flat memory address. So we need to do a little bit of tricky stuff to actually write to um, the memory and we'll do that now. So we need to take the address of the VGA card and I'm simply gonna call it um, what do I gonna what am I gonna call it? Yeah, I'm gonna call it VJ and I'll define it in a second. We take the base address of the VGA card, then we add the sorry the X coordinate and yes the um, parentheses here are actually needed or they make it more safe. Um, plus the Y coordinate times the screen width. All this will do is um, compute the two-dimensional coordinate into a one-dimensional address. You can try to calculate it in paper and you will see that it works. This gives us only the um, address and in C++ to actually do something with the address we need to write an asterisk. Now we can do something with the address and we can just write, okay, write the color C into there. And we probably also want to be able to later um, get the value of a pixel. Works just the same, we just leave out the assignment. So this will um, give you the contents of the pixel at coordinates x and y. 
it will not check for illegal coordinates. So you can trash your system, you can write anywhere you want. Don't do that. And we won't do that here. But be careful, you can really make your PC crash or format your hard drive or whatever. MS-DOS didn't have any protection against that. But other than that, should be fine. The VGA pointer. Um, we have to define it. Define VGA as something. Uh, we can define it or we can use a variable. Let's use a variable because it's probably doesn't matter. So um, yeah, let's let's start like this. So it's basically a pointer to a lot of bytes. And it will be at address 0xA000 and offset 000. We can't write it like this because, yeah, this is not valid syntax, but we can just leave out the semicolon and it will do it correctly. However, this is a very large number, so we need to also tell it this is actually a long integer, which is this L here. But this will not work. If we try to build this, it will say error, declaration index error. Um, first of all, we need to put the definition of the byte before. However, this will probably also not be enough. Yeah, exactly. Non portable pointer conversion. The thing is, in Turbo C, all the pointers default are usually near pointers, which means they only take these four bytes, the offset. These are so-called near pointers and they totally ignore the um, segment. So we need to tell Tobac, and this is totally MS-DOS specific and not supported on Linux or stuff, uh, this is a far pointer. And also, um, since this is only an integer, we need to tell the compiler Please, we actually mean this is a far pointer. And if we do this, it will actually work. So, um, it did compile. Shall we try it? And we don't see much because we didn't call it. Um, let's take out the... Oh no, we can't do that. That's C++. Let's take out the hello world. We don't need that. Let's call here draw background to see what we actually get. Yeah, that's something. Let's zoom in. We get a nice colorful rainbow. And this is what you see here is the default palette of the VGA card. Um, it starts off with the standard 16 CGA colors, then a gradient of grayscales, and then uh, colorful rainbows in different saturations and brightnesses. What we actually want is a nicer color, right? A nicer palette. So we need to sort of have some function that gives us a nice palette. And I will call it get sky palette. We'll make something that looks a bit like sky. And we'll store this in a byte array um, called... No, we don't even need that. Yeah, we need that. Um, called pal. And then we will set the palette, however we will achieve that, and pass that palette to that function. Let's first concern ourselves with the get sky palette function. Um, actually, this will return a byte pointer, sky palette. All right. Well, we will need a byte pointer pal here and some counter variable for our looping. And in the end, we will return that pointer. First of all, we need the memory because now we have only a pointer which doesn't point to anything. And in DOS, you actually call, as well as on Linux or other systems, the malloc function. And we want a palette which has some num colors colors times three. Why is that? Um, because we are using RGB palettes. 
we can change basically every color that was shown here and we have 256 different colors so we will just define that because we will need it later anyway define no colors 256 thing to know about the VGA it uses not um, simple true color modes like modern video cards where you just write RGB values to, to the memory because that was too inefficient but you would only write the index of color like 15 or something which would be white I think in the standard palette and then you could change that color by manipulating the color palette registers and write those values in here so we make a nice color ramp for this we count from 0 to let's say the first half of the screen um, this would be 100 gonna count up and then we are going to write into this array at position i times 3 because of the RGB plus 0 for the red value and we will take here um, the minimum of the value 63 or the value i and why do I say 63 here? This is by the the red color. VGA supports 6 bits of palette colors, so that's from 0 to 63. Not 8 bit colors, so there's loss of fidelity here compared to your average card nowadays. But that's good enough. This was back in the late 80s rather awesome already and better than many other things. So red and green we will set to the same value and the blue will be the ramp up for the for the screen. No, well actually not. This will be head constant. The ramp up will be the other colors. And this will make a nice blue screen. We need to define min and max um, again for purposes of efficiency. I will write this as a macro, although it has drawbacks. So if x x is greater than y, then we return. Uh, we should put extra parentheses on this, or else it can have serious consequences. Then we return x. Otherwise, we return y. And we need the same here for the minimum function. Also not defined in Turbo C. If x is smaller than y, then we return x otherwise y. Um, okay, so this should already build. Yeah, except ah, we need to include malloc. Where could malloc be? I think it might be in mem.h. Yes, mem.h is the memory stuff. Oh no, I'm wrong. Let's take a look again. Alloc.h. Here we have it. Alloc will allocate stuff. Great. So include alloc.h and it will make at least this here. And I didn't yet write the set palette function. Which means we have to write that still. That's fine. We'll do that in a minute. For the second half of the screen, we go from line 100 to the last line of the screen. And we'll do something very similar to this. So let's just copy this block. But we'll make slightly different stuff here. Um, let's set the red to a fixed value. And this here to some other magic value. And you can figure out at home what it will look like. What do you think will this be? So this is that function. Um, but we can't yet set the color palette, right? How do we do that? 
Well, we already know that we have the interrupts to speak to the BIOS. We have the far pointer to the memory address of the VGA memory. And there's a third way to talk to the machine. And that's via um, I.O. ports. Um, here, I.O. ports are similar to memory addresses, but they have their own um, machine code called out and in to write to or to read to. And every device gets a couple of I.O. ports. Right? So, for example, the first few are for the DMA controller, and there's other stuff for, um, I think, the programmable interrupt controller or the keyboard controller, stuff like that. And there's also things for the video card. Let's go to the main page. And this is probably here, port addresses, ports. If you look here for VGA, we find this here. Um, there's a whole range from hexadecimal 3C0 to 3CF, which is the VGA and EGA registers. And there's one particular interesting thing, the 3C8 and the 3C9, which influences the digital to analog converter. The first one, there you say which color you want to manipulate. And the second one, you say what the new RGB values should be for this color. So we will use that actually. So the first one, oops, we will have to iterate. The first one we write to, and we call this the palette index, because um, you say which index in the palette you want to change. And we will start at zero. Um, the calls now to the palette data port Will actually increment the index value so we only need to make this call once and we will just write simply the values from our array to that port and of course we will need to iterate here iterate over all the values and we have 256 times 3 so 768 colors to iterate over indent this and we need to define those two values um, well, let's put it somewhere here fine VGA no what do we call it palette index is look to the left 0x 3c8 and Zerex 3C9 is the other one. And in C, this is called out P, and um, let us see which. Is it IO? No, this is not IO. It is in which header? I think it might be in DOS.H. Sure. Yes, it is. Here we have it. Out P writes a byte to hardware port. And the same goes for in P, of course. Simply enough. Dust.h we already have. We have the set palette, we already call it. I think we can try to build it. It builds successfully. And we can run it. Look at that. Isn't that nice? We have a little bit of grass and a nice sky. And we can still press keys and it looks weird. We'll disable that in the next episode. Um, yeah, I think we already are way too long. Um, what did you learn today? Quite a bunch. You learned about the VGA frame buffer. You learned about interrupts and how to use them to initialize the hardware. You learned a bit about hardware I.O. ports to define the palette. Let's take this a bit apart, and yeah, next time we will try to animate something and to draw a bit more stuff. Uh, 
if you like this, please share, like and subscribe as always. Subscribing being the most helpful way to support me. And I hope you enjoyed this, learned something. Have a nice evening.